Hello friends, as I wanted to do before and I kind of said that I wanted to do some stenciling, I am going to work on some stenciling with you guys. So, um, this is a piece of watercolor paper and it's quite uh, a good quality. I can't remember where I put it down over there. Where does it say? It is 300 pound, I think. I'm trying to read. No, 140. Sorry, 140. And so this one is not gesso. This is gesso. Um, just thought I'd do that. I'm using the watercolor just because it's nice uh, paper. I cut it up. It's a big piece and I cut it out. And you can even see the dullness I got. You can see a couple sheen spots where I might have missed with the gesso. But anyway, so I'm just going to kind of play with my background here. I have picked a few stencils. And I'm just going to show you what I got. Just some manageable smaller stencils here. Um, a few here. And this one is uh, a Deco. No, these two are from Deco Arts. And this one is from um, Michael's. Can't remember the brand. This is from a Happy Mail. And this is from when I bought something else and it was in it. I think at Walmart. I can't remember what I bought though. That this was behind so I can't remember what it was but anyways I'm gonna make a background what else I had another one here I'll probably use this one as well maybe my birdie one so I'll just put it on the side here get my waters um actually a little closer because I have them here okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of paint my background with some leftover paints that I have in here and then also I'm going to add a little bit of orange. I'm just going with any color and I'm enjoying these. Ooh, what is that? Just a little bit of paint and I am playing with it so I'm just going to add more of these colors because I don't have that much of these colors in there and I wanted them and I'm going to grab I'm just going to grab any old paper towel, any old uh, brush here. This is really big. I think doll store brush, maybe. I don't know what it is. It might be. No, it's Crayola. So I'm just going to kind of go with this and just paint a bit of a background here. Just because, just because I want to add color to my background. I'm just gonna pull in some green. There's a little bit of black in there. Some teal. I'm not doing any particular thing. I'm just pulling in some background. just because I want to. That I, I thought if it has a, a bit of a contrast that maybe it would be really fun visually for you guys so in colors so that's the only reason why I'm just adding all this different colors it's crazy right okay good so I have the gesso on there and why I did it this way I don't know. no reason no reason I'm gonna quickly dry it and then we're gonna play with it so the first thing I thought I'd do is um, grab my stencil here I have this brush it's kind of a bristly brush. Don't know where I got it. It says plaid. I might have just got it like given to me or yard sale or whatever. And this one is good for, you know, doing the little motions like this um, in there. So one thing you can do that I do often is you could, you know, use your makeup brush and your ink and you do perfect little I uh, see that's why I kind of did I wanted a little contrast 
you could do your perfect little adding of ink like that. Really cute and sharp and crisp. So you can use your ink pads and that kind of a thing. Um, I am just going to use this on my black here and try to dab it off right here a little bit. And I'm just going to go in like this. And I kind of do a little bit of a dabbing, but I kind of do a little bit like a, a correction mark almost in the, in the shape of or a rounded uh, Nike shape. But maybe in the opposite direction because I, I'm just handed, I, you know, so it would be like, um, you know, like a Nike shape. A little bit that I do while I'm, while I'm like dabbing. So that is a perfect way to do it as well. So you can see the difference between the ink and the paint. And um, some people like to do a bit more messier and go like, you know, twirl. But you really need a dry brush because you get paint underneath. Um, I'm just going to show you that look. So it's pretty close to the same. It's just a little less paint on there then there's the dabbing and there's that one can you see how less paint there is on there so that is you really need a dry brush for that another thing flip it over guys and I use my roller which is right here all the time so you could do that with on your spare paper and look at that marking so that's great stenciling right there rinse that off. Um, another thing I love to do with stencils, and I'm going to throw this in the water, I'm going to rinse it off. I'm using a different stencil now. So before I use this again, I'm really going to have to like um, wipe it dry really good with my paper towel and kind of let air dry for a few minutes for just really, because I only have the one like this particular one. So, um, here's another one I'm just going to go, actually I'll do it again, with this a little bit damp. I'm going to dab it a little bit off right here because I don't want to waste that paint. So if I dab it off on something else, it's going to be gone. So I'm really going to try to dab lots off. So here's my, again, that here is kind of going around the circle. There's, you'll see this one is a little bit on the damp side, so it's pulling in and underneath a bit. Can you see that? Because my brush is a tad damp. Now, if it's a tad damp and you want it, you can just go dab, 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 dab. And I do just a slight circle. It's just something automatic. There it is. So it's it's a different, you can see the brush strokes on there are different. So this is like the dabbing. That's the stroking. You can see the difference in that. So in the white, and that's why I did the white background. I wanted to show you guys the contrast or the different color background. Rinse it again. Somebody told me that the ridges on my little watery thing is to rinse my brushes off. And guess what? It works like a charm. Love it. Thank you. I can't remember who made the comment, but it was awesome. Awesome. Helpful. So, um, spraying let's play with spraying I'm gonna leave this for a minute and I'm going to grab another carp now this one has no gesso on it so I'm going to I'm having the worst sprays ever okay my sprays are being very I'm not cleaning them so that's probably my problem so just an FYI maybe clean them I don't know let's see if I clean them stick it in there a bit My other ones that I make are not high maintenance, so I'm just saying that I don't never had a problem with them for a whole year. I didn't have to clean them. I only had one color, you guys, if you recall my video, that clogged up. And I think it was just not clogged up, but it was just the... So let's see if that helps. It was just the... So spraying stencils... You gotta have a bit of a distance. Now, let's see. I'm gonna actually, I actually 
if you guys can hear me, actually literally grabbed my ruler. So I'm saying I'm about seven to eight inches away from my stencil while I'm spraying. This is really technical here, guys. I'm really totally checking this out. Now, of course, I'm being uncareful because, hey, it did work maybe better. But this one, was, I actually never really had much of a problem with this. And my red one would be a good tester. So let's see. Not bad. And, of course, again, this thing is the handiest thing. This is the cheaper one. It is $15.99. I think it's like that Michael's roller. They are very expensive. They can be very expensive. This one was the um, Mod Podge brand. I think that's why. I don't know. Anyway, I always do that. Maybe not on my work, but somewhere else. Always dab it off. So it's spraying. So eight, seven to eight inches. If you go closer, and I will go closer. I'm going to grab my red and see if that cleans up. Because my red, I think, is the one that's, um, it's not even looking that dirty, but let's see. I'm going to dip it upside down because I'm being weird like this in here and see how that cleans. It was going really wonky on one of my videos. It actually sprayed on my watering box thing here I can show you but I can't tip it sideways so let's see it's a little better anyway so that maybe rinsing dipping under you know rinsing that would be a good idea now that one was very wet and I think I went a little closer but I was kind of more testing the spray so I would say for the sprays to go about seven to eight inches away, which works great. So that's the sprays. Um, I have other sprays that I use, my alcohol ones. I'm having less trouble with, I mean, the colors are different. These ones are way vibrant, but that's not what we're talking about today. So another thing I like to do with my, I'm going to grab another piece stencils is there is also I'm going to spray the background here a little bit of a purple see this one looks clean it's fairly new and it sprays off okay and I'm getting it everywhere everywhere but that's whatever so I'm kind of going with that on there so I can show you, it's a darker color. Whew. Show you some stenciling. So I'm going to use my white because I don't want to dye my sten my color. Uh, I mean, not stenciling, stenciling, but modeling paste. I have my, is this it? Is this it? Nope, this is not it. Uh, this is something else. Sorry, blah. This is it. My modeling paste. Um, I do have another one, but it's quite dry. Let's see if I can use that. I've been having trouble with this one. It's, it's been around a very long time, so it's quite dry. So out of convenience, I'm going to use the Deco Arts, but I'm, it's just because it's much more moist. So I don't know. I have to. You can see that it's like icing on a cake it's much nicer also too you can use like um, drywall compound and all that kind of stuff but it's going to be gritty and for the smaller um, stencils it is actually not I mean it's you can still work it but it, it, these these smaller stencils especially something like this the actual modeling paste is just smoother and it gets in there really nice so it's just to get better look so here's modeling paste and I'm going to go in the same direction. You can go back and forth, but I do kind of tend to go the same direction. The more you go back and forth, I find the more you're going to have, you can go a little bit, the more you're going to have um, chances of pieces going underneath. So there is that. 
and then you go pretty flat and you get good even see how that's why I did the background so funky so you can see that now that is a totally cool look and look at look how much I actually got on here not much I can even wipe that just quickly with my see not even wasteful here so I got my cloth and I could still get away with not even washing it right away because I'm wiping most of it off so it's all good it's all good another thing I like to do with this I'm gonna show you the black modeling paste in a second it's the same thing but black for this brand but um, but it's the same just of it just of it but I'm gonna dry this up I dried it too a little bit like so I can put my stencil on I think without but I did touch up my thumb so it does it's not totally dry but I, if you over dry these they kind of puff up a bit so another thing I wanted to show you guys is um, using your paint with the stencil with the palette knife so I'm just gonna go like this now this is it could be a fun thing but it's gonna be messy it's gonna go underneath and but you gotta work with it and use that effect so I'm putting a little bit of paint on here and I'm not being totally careful I'm just grabbing whatever I can grab uh, let's see if I can get more from yellow But this is for like a say you want a certain effect. You kind of get you get that paint underneath, but you get a really cool look. Can you see how it is? Now if you're doing one color, it's gonna be a little bit less interesting because it's gonna be one color under there, which I will show you right now. But you can totally play with it. So I did several colors. To show you like if you're doing some kind of really neat funky thing how really cool it looks but it didn't look like even much paint was coming on or off but it is a really cool fun thing to do i'm going to grab my other card here and move this one because i don't want to dry it and i'm going to throw this on here and i'm going to use the white no no, no, no. What should I use? I'm going to use... I'm going to go in here. I'm going to use the orange. Just because I want to show you like a really cool contrasting color that's not going to look hideous. And you guys are going to be like, why is she doing that? Showing us this. Okay, so I got quite a bit of orange on my palette knife here. And I'm just going to go again. I'm picking it up. Like purposely kind of scooping it up and just going... So now I have all the same color and I'm really scraping hard and I'm holding my stencil hard up against there. So you can see on the background how that can kind of look really cool and um, I like it. So the technique for this is just holding it down really hard and um, really just uh, getting the paint on there because you don't want too much texture but you just want a little bit of visual texture with the background or something so you can do that with inking or the brush too but this is just a different look see I can do the same thing with this this is what I did on top with the brush and this is the dabbing with the brush a little short stubby one and this was with the palette knife just to do a little different technique and that's why you know I want to show you that because I hope this is not really like crazy complicating or crazy why am I showing you this but to me it's really fun um it's really fun to play with so let's see uh I'm just gonna dry this up so I don't smush it and make a mess right here uh another thing actually I was just should have showed you is like the reason too that this is really handy is it doesn't take much to to dry so it's much quicker to dry than the modeling paste 
you know, so the modeling paste is still even a bit wet and I did dry it with like um, the heat tool as well. But I didn't over dry it because it could get crazy over dry. But also, so now this is nice and dry and I could go over it and offset it a tad. And with the same, because I'm now I'm having my mind say, my mind's going on like, okay, this technique or this or this idea. And I'm just going to scrape some on. And look, I'm not even being like careful, careful that I get all into the holes. And this is what, you know, you're getting a little bit of a different look. And it's just playing with it and whatever you like, right? So. You can do whatever you wish. There's so much fun you can do. You can dab off any extra paint easy and get a really cool look. Um, going with the green just a tad. With the palette knife, just to show you guys, like, the texture you're getting, the visual. I mean, this looks like a muddy mask, but I'm just kind of showing you. You can do all the the same colors and dry each layer or whatever you guys want. But it's it's really you get that texture of something's there, but it's really not too thick, right? It's really much more flat, and you can do that if you want. This is way flatter though too, but it's uh nice to have some of these textures sometimes and you're like well what's the difference or whatever and I know I got these two different colors but I'm going to show you hmm so I have this as white so I'm just gonna do some palleting uh, white over here and show you maybe why we want to have alright I'm gonna throw it on like uh, this and I go with the white it's got a little red in there but Oh, that one was really juicy. I'm going to throw some more over here. I'm trying to grab my white. I don't have enough white. So you're having some marks like this. Now, it, it's not as clean and nice. Maybe if that's not the look you're looking for. But I just want to show you one of the reasons why we do such a neat little texture thing, or for me anyway, that I'm using the paint instead of this other stuff. I'm going to dry this on off, and this is the paint results. And you can really see the visual differences. I mean, it's all in how like neat and tidy you want, or messy and different kind of art. But this is one of my favorites, so I'm just going to open this up. This is, I got contrast, and this is... Uh, you can use buffing or whatever. This is metallic luster, but I'm going to go over the look. I'm just going to take my finger and I'm going to go over it and look at how that picks it up. Now I'm going over what I did with paint over here just slightly and there's it's not picking up. I'm going so slight because I don't want to push my finger into it. And But look at how it's picking up and that is the really the reason you can do so much visual with your art much more if you try different um, you know painting with your stencils rather than just stenciling with a brush or ink it different looks depending on what you want if you want that texture like look how it picks up on another medium and I'm going over this it it goes on but it's like going on and it's not picking up like BAM really cool right and and you know I got a little much on there, but look at look at that. And then I'm going back down here. And yes, I'm spreading some on because I got a little bit much, but it's not picking up anything. It's just on the flat paper. So, you know, it's really makes that much of a difference in your art and picking it up and stepping it up a little bit more sometimes to have that texture. So it's something to try. Now let's even go over here where I have a little bit of a different texture. This one I use the swirly motion. This one I use the pouncing motion. So let's see. Let's see the difference. 
Now the swirly motion. I am seriously going over it the same um, and you can see that it picks up just slightly because there's more tooth on the pouncing than when I do the swirling motion. So there's different techniques and why you probably should use them. And of course, going over it with the ink is just not even picking up. It's just the paper's tooth that's picking it up, not the paint. So, and I am going over it the same. And some of it is coming over here, but I think that's more of the paint from here. Do you guys get that? I don't know if I'm just talking like a crazy woman. But to me, that is makes a lot of the difference in things and reasons why I do weird things. And of course, this one's not dry. But I mean, that looks just really, really good. I'm just using wacky colors here because that's what's on my palette. Also, you know, that's what I was using recently. But... You can see the advantages of using paint and using your stencils in a weird, different way. It's really cool. So, I also was going to show you the black gesso. Very creamy and the same. Where is it? Black, where are you? Um, did I grab it? <laughs> no, not the gesso, the black marbling paste. Sorry. And it's exactly the same as the white, really. Um, I really do like the black. I'm just going, I know I'm kind of, eh, why is she testing mom and piece? Just showing you what it looks like through is all. So I have this one. Let's see. This one's kind of a, a, a finer, still not dry. See, I did, if that's the thing with the mom and piece. This one's a finer um, um, stencil. So I'm just going to pick up some black, go over it here. Like I said, I like to go kind of the same direction unless I see space like I'm not filling properly. Okay, so the more you go over it, the more you're, you're going to probably... But if you see, uh, here's a little space. I just go a little bit more like buttering some butter on it or whatever you know or cream cheese butter the butter is so soft it's the butter it's not even cream cheese it's the texture it's the nice soft butter so that was I didn't even I don't think if you guys see me if I flip back or not I don't think I did but I might have just but if you see a space you just kind of make sure you you like you do when you're buttering toast and you see a hole and you really want to get that melted butter in a little bubble so it's really nice. And I like the black modeling paste paste because of like, look at that. It's done. It's so pretty. It's done. It's like a little adding ink to it with texture and you don't even have to worry about it. You know, you can do the same thing with the, like I was showing you before with the, the black ink or black paint and we'll have the same type of thing where it's lower or you get the little bristly and I can even feel the difference just touching it with my tip of my finger how smooth this is the one we kind of curled and the one we went like this with and the one we bristled I can just feel the difference so there's that texture and if people are textury and they like to touch the cards or whatever you've gifted them and that you know that can make a big impact too so so that's that. Let's see here. I'm gonna. So I think that is the basics. Um, I have the sprays, and I didn't really do too much with that. But I mean, that's you know, um, I'd have the different paste, and this one's still still dr not quite dry. And I dry this one a little bit too. Um, and then, then you have the reasons why I like my cool um, paint and and the look. If you get the colors that you want to blend together or whatever, it's a really cool look. That's just that stencil, but hey, you got tons of different stencils, circles, and that kind of a thing. And then you, my reasoning why I really enjoy the paint, and you guys got that. Um, I think the one last thing that I do sometimes with my stencils is um, I use my fingers. So here's a stencil, and um, this video might be getting long. Um, I do like to use my fingers with my stencils quite often, so um, you guys seen that in other 
whoops, maybe I'll move that video. So here is my bird. Let's just say I'm going to go right there with my bird. And do I have, now you can, you can do this with a brush or whatever too. And I have to paint all over my hands. So hopefully that's not going to be a problem, but you know, you can use your fingers for stenciling. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of paint here. I'm just going to go like this. You could dab, just like your brush, dab your finger onto the paint, dab some of it off. Oops, can't see. Dab into the paint, dab a little bit off. There you go. And you get a kind of a neat texture on that too. And then, you know, you grab your piece of... I'm not going by any particular colors. I'm just going to kind of play like... I'm not trying to be too artsy. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of olive green. And I'm just going to go on here. So you can use your fingers too if you're in the mood to use your fingers. It is um, not difficult. I'm not dabbing off and on, on your video very well here guys I'm not showing you I'm not being a very good teacher sorry but you can use your fingers if you just don't even know what brush to use or or you don't want to keep switching off the colors or whatever the case may be um say I want to make this bird okay um his belly a bit of a blue bird maybe I'm going to grab a little bit of the yellow. I'm just now playing here and I'm going to grab, go on the space where I have to, room to dip my fingers. Put a little bit of a orange on his belly. Now I'm just going to give him a little bit of a pink head maybe. And a dab of a yellow beak. I mean, this is not perfect, but hey, I did my last one. Now this is all doing it with my finger. Let's see how it turned out. Not too bad. Now he's on a dark paper. I did a little bit of moisting up too much there, but hey, look at his, um, his tree, the birds, bodies all in there. Um, you're just basically doing the same thing let's see here now I'm gonna go down here I'm gonna grab my bird I'm gonna grab my brush you could do whatever look you want now I'm gonna do my body blue I am going to do sometimes see sometimes it's just now I'm rinsing it off now I'm gonna Blot it off. Grab my paper towel. Blot my brush. I'm going to do his head a tad pink. And then I'm going to... So it could be like whatever look you want. It doesn't have to be always... Uh, I'm going to do his back a little red. And... God, I moved my hands. Sorry, guys. I need more paper towel because I'm using a brush. Not to say using your fingers is easier or better. I'm just showing you the process here. So I'm now using, I got him pretty moist. So if I messed up on the, that's not the brush's fault. That would be my fault because my brush is really moist now because I'm going quickly. And now I'm doing the brown. The brush should be drier kind of by now. So... As a quick bird, it's not a whole lot different than the top one. I did do the um, bottom stick a little bit clearer, but it could be also looking clearer because of the paint in the background. So there you go. It's not much different. And in fact, I think that this bird is a little bit better than this bird. So I'm just showing you that you can do it with your fingers and play with it, get your fingers dirty and have fun with it. There's tons of ways you can use your stencils, and I hope I helped. And if you guys have any questions or think I'm just totally crazy, just comment below. 
and I um, will talk to you guys later. So don't forget to craft like a duck, and I hope you guys um, enjoyed this. Bye-bye, guys.